Hi there, I'm Beth and today I'll be showing you how to sew Blythe doll dresses using my bib front dress pattern. The pattern is available to download now from my website bethramsden.com. It comes in A4 and US letter size. I made this dress here using the same pattern with an additional apron. This version has a tiered skirt made from one longer rectangle gathered to match the upper rectangle. There's more information about the skirts in the pattern. This version has the rounded bib front and the top puff short sleeve. Once you've printed it out, just cut out the template pieces and you can follow along sewing with me. Here are all the sleeve shapes included in my pattern two short lengths with more gathers in either the top or the bottom, and one longer sleeve. And here are the two different bodice styles, with a rounded bib or a squared one. This is the bib itself, which fits either style. This is the bodice back. This is the sleeve cuff. The neckline facing piece. And finally, two styles of collar shape, pointed or rounded. This is the rounded one. As you can imagine, there are countless ways you can mix and match these elements to make new dresses. I'll be using two different cotton fabrics for the dress with a little plain white for the neckline facing, some lace trim and embellishments to match, Velcro or snap fastenings for the closure, and I'll be finishing the edges with fray check or the overlocker. Because it's still winter here and I didn't get to make as much as I wanted using my Christmassy fabrics, so I've chosen a couple of wintry ones to use. This one's for the bodice, skirt and cuffs, and this one for the collar, bib and sleeves. I iron and prepare my fabric I'll be drawing on the reverse side. And let me show you how I align the templates with the grain. If your fabric has a selvage edge, then it should be vertical, like my right side edge. The sleeves should be laid like this, and the collar pieces like this, imagining a straight line along the back edges. The remaining pieces align like this, with the cuffs either horizontal or vertical. You might instead want to place your templates to match a printed pattern, to run stripes in different directions. Just try it out and see. I choose my sleeve and collar shapes for the first dress, and will trace round them with a heat erasable pen. I'll draw around the collar twice, leaving about one centimetre space between them, and seam allowance all round, as we will be sewing on this outline directly. Once outlined, I like to apply fray check to the edges. I let it dry fully before cutting out. I'm a total cheapskate, so my fray check is actually watered down white fabric glue. On the collars, I only free check the inner curve. While that dries, I draw out my skirt. I make sure I have a right angle since the fabric is a little skewed. Making sure the pattern is facing the right way, I measure a skirt length of 9cm and a width of 26cm. This includes the seam allowances. I will then draw around the bodice front and back pieces and the two cuffs with a little plain white cotton for the facing piece. I apply fray check all around the edges, although I leave out the skirt because I'm going to overlock those edges.
My templates have dried and are cut out along the outlines, except for the collars, which I now match with another piece of fabric right sides in. I cut it roughly, leaving seam allowance, and will next sew along the outline of each collar, leaving the previously fray checked edge open for turning through. I use a pretty small stitch length for the collar with reverse stitches at the start and end of every seam. I'm lifting the presser foot often to follow the curves. I use a clear satin stitch foot which helps me to see the lines. I cut straight along the inner curve lines, then switch to pinking shears to cut fairly close to the other outlines. Don't cut too close or you could poke a hole when turning them out, and if you don't have pinking shears, just leave about a 3mm seam allowance and make little snips in it to ease the tension. Then turn them right side out. I use a hemostat, but needle nose pliers or tweezers can help too. I push out my corners well, and they'll get ironed shortly. My remaining pieces are dried and cut out. I press them all to remove the pen marks and this fixes the fabric glue fray check permanently too. I take the bodice front and draw on the 5mm seam allowance round the bib. For the curved one, I make several snips into the allowance to let me turn it over. For the squared one, I do the same, but I only need two snips into each corner. I press my collar pieces flat and neat, and then carefully press the bib seam toward the inside, following the outline. Next, we attach the bib pieces to the inside. This can be tack stitched or glued into place before it's sewn on, and we can snip off these little extra bits. Here, I put a little strong fabric glue on the seam allowance. Align the bib with the bodice at the shoulders raw edges matching up, then press down the rest gently. Now I will stitch close to the fold neatly to join them properly. Here I have a wide piece of lace that I like to cut into narrower pieces for trims. I'm going to use this piece to add to the bib outline. I just hand stitch this into place so it follows the curve neatly. Here I'm dusting off the overlocker to hem the skirt piece.
I also decided to overlock the backs of the bodice too, so that the closure will all be finished the same way at the end. Here they are finished and the skirt too. While everything's still flat, I iron in the 5mm seam allowance of the bodice backs and the skirt hem too. Next I'll sew together the bodice at the shoulders. Right sides in, joining both back pieces to the front. Whilst at the machine, I also sew the lower hem of the skirt. I always do a little back stitch at the start and end of each seam so they don't pull apart. I press open the shoulder seam. Before attaching the collar, I make little snips into the seam allowance of the neck curve. I'm not cutting the seam allowance of the shoulder inside, just the facing fabrics. I only snip where it's curved to ease the tension and allow it to spread open. Now I add a little fabric glue to the inner edge of the collar to fix it to the bodice before sewing. I carefully align it with the centre front. I repeat for the other collar so it looks like this. Now I can layer on the facing piece so it matches the bodice. I'll pin it in place before sewing along the back, the neckline and the back, leaving a 5mm seam allowance. I have my needle positioned so it's 5mm from the outer edge of my presser foot. This allows me to eyeball my seam allowances rather than having to draw them on first, which saves me a lot of work. Once sewn, I snip the seam allowance to help turn it through. I cut off the corners and snip the curves. If your fabric is a little thick, you could cut the neckline seam allowance down to about 3mm to reduce bulk. Now I can turn the facing piece through to the inside, pushing out the corners neatly. Your collar should be sitting nicely like this. If it's uneven, you can flip the facing back over and try unpicking and re-sewing the collar line. Hand sew if needed. You can see here the facing piece pulls inward the back closure hem at each side. It should fold in where we pressed it before. Now I press the facing flat and neat, making sure my shoulder seam isn't tucked over. I will prepare the sleeves next by sewing long straight gathering stitches along the upper and lower edges about 3mm in from the edge. These can then be gathered by pulling on the bobbin threads. At the machine I set the longest stitch length and turn my tension right down to zero. I start and end about 5mm in from the sides and without reverse stitches. I leave the threads a little long so they can be pulled on and tied in a knot later. I repeat this for the upper curve. Next I fold, pinch and mark the centre top sleeve with a pin.
I'll start by gathering the top, though if you prefer you can attach the cuff first and then insert the sleeve, it's up to you. I find the bobbin thread at each side and pull on it to gather up the sleeve. I finger press the gathers so they're a little flatter. This sleeve has the most volume at the top here. The others have more gathers at the bottom. I will show another example at the end of the video. With right sides together, I align the sleeve to the bodice at the side. I pin here and use my fingers to press the seams together along the curve to see if I need to gather more or less to match the armhole. Once I'm happy that they match, I pull the top thread through to the bobbin thread side and tie the threads together firmly so they don't shift while I'm sewing in the sleeve. It might help to tie off one end and then make any final adjustments before knotting the other end. We can use the pin marking the middle to help see where it should meet the centre shoulder seam, so our gathers are even on each side. It's totally fine to hand stitch your sleeves in or to tack stitch them before machine sewing, but I'll show you how I do them here. Don't forget to reset your tension and stitch length. Mine is about 2.5. I have the leading edge pinned until I get the needle down. Then with just a couple of stitches at a time, I hold the seams together by hand, lift the presser foot with the needle down to pivot and reposition, then a few stitches more and repeat. I leave a seam allowance of five millimeters aligning the edges as I go to the edge of my presser foot. Take it slowly and make sure the centres match up and that the gathers stay evenly distributed. Here's my inserted sleeve. I can snip off the threads now. And we'll make a couple snips in the curved area of the bodice seam allowance. This helps me to press the seam allowance away from the sleeve towards the body. Next, I'll pull on the bobbin threads as before to gather the lower sleeve to match the width of the cuff. Pin in place before sewing, right sides in like this, and distribute the gathers evenly the start and end will be flat. I 
I sew them together and the cuff folds out like so. Here both sleeves and cuffs are inserted and to finish the cuffs I will fold them over the seam allowance towards the inside. The edge should extend past the previous seam line, but if it doesn't, or if you want a narrower cuff, you can trim down the seam allowance a little. To secure the cuff, I will sew from the top side, in the ditch or into the previous seam. This should secure the underside too. With both cuffs finished, we can close in the sides of the bodice. Fold along the sleeve right sides in like this and we will press the seam allowances here downward toward the body, not the sleeve. Clip or pin this to secure, then sew along the sleeve and side seam. I always start with the cuff first, securely backstitching each end. I make snips into the seam allowance at either side of the armpit and finger press the side seams open. Next we can prepare the skirt to be attached. I will sew two parallel gathering seams like we did with the sleeves, long straight with zero tension. I sew one at 3mm in from the edge and one around 7mm in. I pull both bobbin threads at the same time to get a nice regular gather from both ends. I like to gather this tightly, then press with the iron because I like lots of little wrinkles in the skirt. But I forgot to add my lace trim to the hem. I'll do this now while it's still flat. Here I've sewn on a scalloped trim and pressed my gathers. Now with the ends folded out, I'll match the bodice and skirt together. I start at each end and work my way inward with pins making sure the gathers are even throughout. You could pin the centre of the skirt first to see that it meets the bodice centre too. Now I sew straight across to join the waist. Before I leave the machine, I'll fold the seam allowance up towards the bodice and top stitch just two millimeters above the previous seam. Here that's done and I can pull out the gathering stitch that remains visible below the waistline here. Another nice finishing touch is to hand stitch the cuff seam allowance flat. It's easier to get doll hands through then. I'll do that and turn my sleeves out to the right side. Now I'll show a clearer example of this at the end, but here I like to add a little stitch joining the sleeve and the facing piece at each side. This holds the sleeve seam allowance in place without a full lining and keeps the facing secure too. This is easier to do before the sides are sewn, which is what I will show at the end. You might also want to add a stitch in the centre too, although I like to wait until I've added any buttons or ribbons to the front first. Here I'm trying the dress on my mannequin and deciding where to add pom-poms. 
I've sewn them and added a stitch to the facing too. Now the inside is nicely finished and nothing flaps about. For finishing the back of the dress, I'll show you my favourite way to get a nice overlapping closure. I've pressed in the two back seams by 5mm and closing in the dress right sides in, you might normally just line up both seams and sew them. Instead, I take one and drop it down, aligning the cut edge with the pressed edge of the seam behind it. There's an offset of 5mm. I'll sew from about 1cm below the waist seam to the bottom hem, following the crease in the lower side, the side on top here. This will create an overlap once opened out, which helps avoid unsightly gaps and flashing pants at the back. Here it's pinned before sewing and you can see the ironed crease I'll be sewing along. There, it's sewn and looks lovely. The upper parts of these folded in hems will be secured in place by the fastening, whether it's Velcro, buttons or snaps. Another nice finishing touch is to open out the skirt and stitch a little across the hem here. It holds everything nice and flat. I'll add some snaps to the back and that will complete this dress. What do you think? Well, before we finished, I want to show another quick example dress, just the different steps. Here's the squared bib shape, which gets folded in along these drawn lines, like so. Again, it matches up with the bib at the shoulders first. Here's the pointed collar in blue snowflake fabric, the underside of which I'm using this Harry Potter fabric for. And I'll make up the longer sleeve for this one. For the skirt here, I'm combining two pieces, the top is 6.5 cm by 26 cm, and the bottom is 3.5. The bottom hem is left raw and frayed intentionally for a soft look. If you're working with nice thin fabric, a glue stick can help hold seams in place before sewing. I use one here to shape the bib front. Another different decorative touch is layering lace in between the bodice and bib. Here you see the top and bottom of the long sleeve is gathered the same as before. And this time I attach the cuff before inserting the sleeve. Here I've added a lace trim to the lower edge of the cuff for a different look. Oh, 
Now that I'm working on a bigger table, my cat Sushi has decided she can come visit. Here's the stitching of the facing piece I mentioned before. I do think it's easier to do it before closing in the sides. In this example, I'm stitching right through the join of the sleeve, just tiny invisible stitches. One last tip for the collar is to add a stitch to the points, front and back, if they're not behaving for you. And here's this sweet little Harry Potter dress all finished. I do hope you've enjoyed this. Please let me know in the comments what you think of the dresses and the pattern. I think it's really versatile. I used it to make all the autumn and winter dress sets I made to sell in 2021 and I love it. You will find the link in the description. Please check it out and subscribe to see more patterns coming soon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again. Bye!